Uh, yes, so welcome to the show. This is, yes, the 11th time we've done this. And uh, before I get going, I have a couple announcements to make. Actually, something that's really important. Um, so I'm going to talk about the show itself first off. So this is, as I said, the 11th time that we've done this show. And we've gone through a little bit. I mean, we've, we've changed a lot over the last, uh, you know, couple months as we've been doing this. And I tell you, this, this has probably been one of the most... Uh, interesting things I've done uh, since I started running a YouTube channel was trying to run a live show on Twitch. And I got to tell you, there's a lot of things that has to be considered when you're running a live show on Twitch. Now, it's not like just playing video games on Twitch, which I love, by the way, and I think I'm going to be st I'm going to start doing that more. However, um, <laughs> trying to run a live show that's about something specific. Hold on, let me just close this. I want to actually get something running here in the background. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. That's okay. Let's get this going, and then I will finish explaining myself. Uh, let's see if we go to history. I had all this ready to go. <laughs> Once again, trying to live run a live show on on Twitch is, is challenging because, you know, it's hard to keep everything organized and together. We're just going to lower the volume on this. This is actually the Kickstarter announcement from Cryptozoic. It's super funny, but as I talk here, it gives you something to uh, to chew on. <laughs> uh, is that working? Yeah, that's that's working. Cool. So, as I mentioned before, um, it is really difficult to run a live show like this on Twitch, especially you know for somebody like myself. I am brand new to doing this. The this is, I mean, the last eleven weeks is is the first eleven weeks I've ever tried to run a live show. Um, and with, with that comes a lot of stresses, but at the same time, the whole reason I wanted to do it is to learn and to grow and to become a better broadcaster. And I think I have, however, um, there is a lot of stress involved in doing this. And I don't think that we've really captured the essence of what I've been trying to accomplish with Crash Test, Crash Test Indie. What I was hoping that this show would end up being is more of a first impressions show for a variety of different video games. And we tried that at the beginning and it was really hard. It was really, really, ch not that it was just hard. It was super challenging to try and figure out how to play games for the first time. And we had like, well, I think we were doing what? five, seven games at a time, it was too much. So then we changed the show to doing one show, one one type of video game where I focus a lot on that game. And I think that is the right answer. However, we got started on the wrong foot. So the people that started watching the show at the beginning, um, if you look in the YouTube channel, the first couple episodes were really, you know, I mean, people were, were interested, like, oh, what is this, you know, whatever. And uh, we got a lot of hits and then people were like, oh, so you're trying a bunch of games that you don't know anything about and you're trying to pass judgment on something that you can't, you can't possibly have a good opinion on. So they stopped watching the show. People stopped watching the show after the first few episodes because of the expectation that this show was going to be a kind of a variety show. And I'm not, I'm not capable of holding up that kind of thing on Twitch every day, uh, every Sunday. So uh, we did change it to the single, sh single show. Now, what's interesting is if you look on my channel, when we do do a first impressions or a first look video, on on a uh, on a video game that actually does quite well because it's it's organized. I'm able to keep it all together. I don't have to worry about a co-host. I don't have to do any of that stuff. And uh, I really enjoy that experience as well. And they get lots of hits. So here's the thing. Um, this is probably going to be the last episode of quote unquote crash test indie. This is going to be the last time that we do a live show where we try and do a first impressions of a game. Um, and there's a number of reasons behind that, but primarily because it's just not working on the YouTube channel. And if I'm going to put as, as much effort as I put into this, I put a lot of effort into the show. I, I mean, I spend eight, I spent nine hours, nine hours playing Hex, which is what we're presenting today, so that I was able to talk about this on the fly. And it's just, it's just too much. And it's been like that with every single uh, thing. And then coming on here, and then I end up forgetting things. And I don't present the, sh the, the game in the way that I think it deserves. Because we only talk about things that I really, really like. Or games that I think are going to be really awesome and amazing. And if I'm not presenting them well on a live show, then I'm not doing it any 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 favors either. So that's, that's it. This is going to be the last Crash Test Indie. And from here on in, I'm going to be doing uh, a non-live YouTube show every Sunday that is going to be a first impression show and it's probably just going to be me and I think that is the formula that's working for me right now. That doesn't mean that we're not going to continue doing live streaming because I love the live streaming but the live streaming I think needs to be just gameplay. I think we need to be just playing games on, on Twitch and as a community playing games on Twitch. So. 
that is where we're going to land. And uh, so we're still going to be, you know, deciding what we're going to be playing every weekend, you know, every Sunday, you know, we're all going to get together as many people as we can get in the community to play games on Twitch, because I think that is super fun. And I think I like that a lot. And I don't have to worry about trying to plan a show. We can just play. Um, but we're... we're Pardon me, we're still going to have a first impressions and that'll be a video on the actual YouTube channel. So I don't know what you guys think about that, but I'm pretty excited to uh, sort of move forward with that. And then also I can I can actually kind of plan my weekends out a little bit better for myself and my personal life too, which is a big thing. Because again, having a live show that's scheduled, then I, I kind of lose the opportunity to go and, you know, spend time with uh, friends and family for important occasions and stuff like that too, which is really unfortunate. I can actually build these videos in advance and have those going. So, can anybody hear me? <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm, I'm looking at chat and I'm seeing, I'm not seeing anybody actually talking about what I'm talking about. So that's, that's cool. I just want to be sure that everybody can hear me, hear me and uh, we're all good. We're all on the same page. So as you can see, we are covering Hex Shards of Fate today. And right now, <laughs> this was, uh, this was the reason I fell in love with Hedge, Hex. Um, well, we're going to talk about what Hex is in a second, but uh, so this is Corey Jones. Corey Jones is the uh, was the uh, director and the lead developer of Hex and for Crypt Cryptozoic Games. Now, Cryptozoic Games was a... Uh, Crypt Cryptozoic Games was a... Uh, it's a company that makes board games, and they've done a couple other things too as well. Um, they have built uh, the World of Warcraft card game, uh, the, the digital card game, and I think they might have done a couple other digital things too as well. But for the most part, uh, Cryptozoic Games has been building board games and building card games, actual physical card games. So for the first time ever, they really wanted to get into building a true digital card game that was uh, as, as powerful and as, as interesting, as artistic, and as dynamic as Magic the Gathering. So uh, this is the Kickstarter video. And as you can see, uh, Corey Jones, in his, in his plea to the Kickstarter community, was, you know, selling a ki kidney. Um, he was... Uh, uh, performing a hit on a clown. He was at, at the end of the video. We're just going to skip ahead here because it's it's a 10 minute video. I would love to show you the whole thing. If you have a chance, go and check it out. I'll show you. I'll, maybe I'll put the link in the description below too because it's super funny. He even had his phone number tattooed onto his fingers so that people could actually <laughs> so that people could actually call the phone number. It was or call him at home. Just one second here, guys. I just want to check something really quick. Uh oh! I closed down too much stuff. Hang on, just give me one sec. Because they're digital, each card has a memory. I closed down. I closed down my Twitch stuff. Just give me a sec. The double back. We have the chance to put on. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So, if you have a chance, it is called Hex Shards of Fate Kickstarter announcement. Go watch it. It's ten minutes long. You will. You will laugh out loud. It's super funny. As a matter of fact, at the end. <laughs> this is so funny. So I, I, this is why I fell in love with Corey Jones and, of course, the, the whole idea and concept behind Hex. He, he really wanted to make this happen. So here's, here's the thing. We're going to switch now over to... Hold on. We've we got to just go to the very end here. Yeah. Oh, hold on. <laughs> I love the outfit. Super fantastic. Yeah, Corey Jones is a character, and uh, he's, he's worked his, his little buns off. So I saw that about three years ago, guys. Let's switch over to Steam here. All right, so that was about three years ago that uh, Corey Jones and his team decided to do the Kickstarter. They raised, by the way, almost $2.5 million to be able to create this game. And uh, they had a lot of really lofty, high goals uh, that they wanted to achieve in order to make this game everything that they, they wanted. And I think they accomplished... Probably three quarters of this. Now, uh, just recently, this has been released on Steam. I think it was the 19th of April. And uh, they decided to not go in as a beta. They've been in beta for three years now um, on their own website. And I've been following the whole time. I did invest in them, of course. I, I say invest. <laughs> Um, my girlfriend or my, my wife would actually argue that investment's maybe not the right word. Would you actually put something money into Kickstarter? <laughs> is that an investment? I guess it is. I guess it's an emotional investment. Um, well, I guess it's financial, but I mean, it's not like you're going to get, you know, something back other than, uh, what, whatever, you know, the game's promising you. But, um, they, over the last three years, I've tried to avoid getting into it too much because, uh, I didn't, I didn't want to see a half built game. Now, what is Hex? Hex is a trading card game now this is very very important it is a digital trading card game this is not a collector 
card game. This is a trading card game. Unlike uh, Duels of the Planewalkers, which is, well, Magic the Gathering. We're going to talk about Magic the Gathering a lot in this because there is some similarities in terms of the phased combat, but that's about it. Um, and uh, Or you've got uh, duels, uh, duels, the ones that, the one that, uh, uh, the one by Ubisoft, it was, uh, I forget the name of it now, Duel, Duel of something. I'll have to look that up. If somebody in chat wants to look that up for me, it's the one that was made by Ubisoft. And then you have Soul Forge, and then of course you have Hearthstone. Those are sort of the the leading ones, the ones that are sitting up above, and Hearthstone is sort of sitting at the top as this kind of casual leader, which is the weirdest thing ever. I'm just gonna have one of these playing in the background while I chat too, and sort of get us warmed up to, to see what this is gonna be all about. But yeah, so you've got Hearthstone sitting at the top, making the most money, getting the most attention because it's because it's so accessible. And I think that's why Hearthstone has found its its its, its glory, its success, its limelight, because it is, it's it's casual, it's easy to get into. You don't have to worry about anything uh, beyond, you know, attacking your opponent, attacking his, his creators, and, you know, a few other odds and ends. And as far as actual combos go and real complex gameplay in terms of phase combat like Magic, it doesn't even compare. Now, uh, the, the one by Ubisoft, Duel of Champions, thank you, Pachirian. Uh, yeah, Duel of Champions is a uh, is one made by Ubisoft, and it's based on the whatever. It doesn't matter. It's 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 also a really interesting dynamic card game, and I really enjoyed it. Soul Forge was more of a was a little bit more casual than that, and then Hearthstone is sort of the the king of the casual. And then you do have Duels of the Planewalkers, and that is uh, the Magic Magic uh, Wizards of the Coast have released a number of different Duels of the Planeswalkers games. In uh, on on both Steam and in the past, um, there's actually it, not produced by Wizards of the Coast. There was one called uh, uh, du uh, Chandelar. Chandelar was made by Micro Pros. This is a company that no longer exists. This was in the uh, mid '90s, I believe, and it was fantastic. It was the only card game like this that had a uh, a full. PvE campaign. Actually, there was no PvP, real PvP in that one, but it had a full PvE campaign where you're actually walking around and fighting other wizards in this land. And I loved that so much. And there's been nothing like that until now. This is not quite the same thing, but it's here. A full PvE campaign where you can go in and it's, the, the, the PvE part is 100% free to play. You can spend money on it, but it is 100% free to play. There is no reason for you to ever spend money on the PVE campaign if you if you don't want to. As a matter of fact, you can take the earnings that you make in the PVE campaign and sell those cards on either the market within the game or in a third party market, which is totally cool with the developers of Hex, which is totally unheard of too, um, because they want to give the cards real value. They want to give the cards real life value, just like you would find in a normal collectible card game like Magic, whereas the cards, depending on their rarity, depending on, you know, uh, their playability, some cards actually in the game are going for 60 to $70, depending. And of course, cards can be pulled out of packs both in the, it, by buying cards from the uh by 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 buy cards from the actual developer or um winning cards in the pvp or in the pve world now there are let's start talking about the game let's actually go into the game here okay stop 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 all right let's go in um by the way this is i, I think i mentioned this already this is a free-to-play game this is the first time i've ever talked about a free-to-play game now uh just to just to validate exactly what I'm saying by free to play, it is 100% free to play for the PVE campaign for player versus enemy for for fighting fighting the computer. It is 100% free to play. You do not have to spend any money. Um, you can, you can, but you don't have to. Really, I've played around with this. There is no reason. I have I had no reason to spend any money during the PVE. Now there is a full PVP. Uh, circuit in this game. As a matter of fact, the goal of Corey Jones when he started developing this game was to make it so that people like myself who grew up with Magic, I spent a lot of time with Magic and I spent a lot of time with spending money on Magic the Gathering. And I had quite a substantial card collection. Of course, I was younger. This was my misspent youth. And, and you know, we used to go to, uh, this is the beginning of Magic. And th there was tournaments. We used to go to tournaments. We used to go hang out at card shops. We used to, we used to do all sorts of those, those, all sorts of those things that you do when you have a collectible card game and, you're, and, you're, and you and your buddies are going out. Now, the thing is, we all get older, right? We all get older and maybe not all of you are older, but someday you will get older and you don't always have time to go see your friends and hang out and play uh, card games. So... Corey Jones wanted to make it make something so that us 
as people who are part of the digital world could sit down and compete on a, on a real competitive tournament level in an esports level. As a matter of fact, they just had their uh, first $100,000 tournament. Take a look on uh, YouTube, you can find it. And uh, y people are competing for real life esports money on this game. It's going to be big. I, I know it's going to be big. I think they've got something really great here. Like I said, I've been following this for a long time. So let's talk about what Hex is. What is Hex? Hex is an asteroid. This is Hex. So Hex, uh, <laughs> Hex is a kind of a bad asteroid because this asteroid once hit Entrath and it actually penetrated right through the planet. It actually, <laughs> I, we're, we're not gonna talk about physics here, but we're gonna talk about magic. We'll just say that Hex is full of magic, which is very, very true. If you think of the lore of the game, there is, uh, <laughs> Um, so Hex is an asteroid, and it actually, at 2,000 years ago, it it actually hit the planet and went clear through. I know there's a way to rotate rotate this planet and look at it, but I don't think I can do it right now. Uh, but yeah, so um, Hex, this, this asteroid here went right through the planet, and in doing so, shattered magical shards all throughout the planet, um, making this world, Entrath, a very magical world with, uh, I think actually if we go here, we can... Oh, the game isn't showing. Okay, guys, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, man, okay. The game isn't showing. I apologize. Okay, let's go back here. Uh, thank you for letting me know. Okay, thank you. Sorry, we're gonna we're gonna backtrack here, guys. Let's go in. Uh, let's try this again. No, 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 no. It's just I keep it. I've got to keep this. I've got I've got streaming software, but I have to keep switching between screens, right? So that's it. There we go. Here is, this is, the funny thing is, none of that was being recorded by, uh, for the YouTube too as well. So they're all going to be like, what's going on? <laughs> Maybe I'll have something going on in the background for, uh, yes, you can see it now. You can see it now, guys. <laughs> I can tell when things are on. Okay, so you should be able to see that now. Let's just verify. Can everybody see what I'm doing? So for the YouTube, for the YouTube guys, I'll probably have something going on in the background for them so that uh, they're not watching nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Just verify for me, guys, that you can see this. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so, let's start over a little bit. Let's backtrack a little bit. So, um, this is a campaign, and this is Entrath. This is the planet that this whole game revolves around. And as you can see on this planet... Uh, yes, as you can see on this planet, um, it has been uh, hit by an asteroid and, uh, regardless of physics, has penetrated right through the planet and gone through the other side. We'll just say that, well, the asteroid is magic, as you know, as, as I've already said. And uh, you can't quite see the asteroid. I'm, uh, he's, he's coming around. He's coming around. The asteroid's name is Hex. And in, in doing so, a whole bunch of Hex shards got scattered throughout the planet. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, see, this is what I'm talking about live shows, man. It's it's super stressful sometimes, man. Anyway, so, like I said, today we are going to be talking more about the, the single-player campaign. There is so much story here. There's so much depth. I I, we, I could spend an hour talking about one of the races, which is the Shin Hare, which is, which is a race of rabbits. It's super crazy how much depth. There's, there's books being written about this stuff already. Just like, oh, there's Hex. There's Hex. Now you can see it. <laughs> yes. So, uh, the PVE stuff, I, I mean, we could talk, we're going to talk a little bit about the PVP stuff, but that's where you're going to have to spend some money, uh, unfortunately, uh, except for possibly one way. You, if you have the time, you could certainly build up your PVP reserves, and I'll show you how. Um, so, we're going to create a brand new champion so that you can get an idea. Like I said, this is intended to be an MMO. So, as time goes on, um, and they haven't included all of the MMO, uh, well, really, any of the quote unquote MMO elements to this, like playing with other players, um, fighting together with, you know, your deck and then your buddy's deck, and then fighting, uh, you know, multiple different bad guys all at the same time in the in world, in, in situations like raids, which are coming, all of that is coming. But they really wanted to release this to get it, uh, you know, to get it out there so that people could get involved and see exactly what this game is all about. So here we go. So just like in any other MMO, you can create a character. <laughs> Everybody's like, oh, Hex, female. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, yeah, or you can have male or female, of course, and there is two primary factions. There's the Ardent and there is the Underworld. And of course, as you suspected, you have good and evil, um, uh, black and white, all of that kind of good stuff. So as the Ardent, you can choose, you can even have an Orc Ardent, you know, all of these. So there's different, there's different races. Now, I don't think they've got all of the races. Maybe they do actually now. Yeah, they've got, they've got everything out now. I, the last time I checked this, I don't think they had, they, they had all the races, but 
whatever so ardent of course then you can pick your uh your race your 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 gender your race and then of course your class now all of these very like vastly change your experience in this game um so think of your champion as almost like it, it, it's almost like a permanent card that's out in play at all times that you can charge up and use to, to perform certain things and do things that actually vastly change the, the play. So for example, um, right now, uh, well, uh, we'll talk about what I have going right now. Right now I could currently have a Venom, which is kind of like, if <laughs> it's funny, they kind of a necrotic space arachnid. <laughs> It's kind of a necrotic space arachnid, sort of, sort of similar to my uh, my whole reassembly series right now. Rob, play the bunny one. It looks okay. I, I will take a look. At, yes, the shin hair. Yes, <laughs> the shin hair are amazing. The amount of story that's behind these guys. So basically, the shin hair are evil rabbits filled with. There's assassins. There's black mages. There's. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, necromancers, there's, they, they're masters of undead, and the problem is with the shin hair, so what's interesting about the shin hair is that they're, they're all really tiny creatures, and they all don't have a lot of hit points, but what the, their powers are usually just awesome, and, uh, you can swarm the enemies with shin hairs, so, and then, of course, you can pick, uh, the different types of classes, and it's very, and it's so vastly different, I don't think you, yeah, you can't even be the shin hair in the Ardent, the Ar shin hair are strictly evil, and the venom are strictly evil, the dwarves are in this, uh, yeah, you can, yeah, you can only be an evil dwarf, and as Patchouli was saying, uh, yesterday, you cannot be a female dwarf. I don't know why. I think there's actually a story behind that. Um, I'm not gonna get into that, but let's, let's start off with the shin hair, and we'll show that off. So we're gonna do a shin hair. What do you think, guys? Cleric, warrior, or mage? Probably mage? Probably, I don't know, or cleric. All of that would be interesting. Warrior, though. The, I like the shin hair warriors because, uh, there's a lot of, um, uh, there's a lot of assassin-like creatures and stuff, which is really interesting. So let's, uh, procreation. <laughs> shin hair powers, yes, procreation, yes. So you can swarm the enemy with, with shin hair. All right, so we're just gonna call this bunny boo, bunny boo boo. There we go. <laughs> like honey boo boo, but not, but oh, I hate honey boo boo. Oh, <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have done that, but whatever. All right, so as you can see, you start it with some basic skills and these, of course, as you gain uh, levels and get more experience, these get more advanced. So, uh, um, in here it's saying you get, you get power points that you can use, uh, over time in the game. So, uh, we'll actually, we'll take a look at that actually in the game. So here we go. Uh, confirm camp champion name is invalid. What? Oh, somebody's already picked bunny boo boo. <laughs> <laughs> bunny babbit. Hold on. Here we go. There we go. Something light and fluffy, but they're actually mean and vicious. Oh, necromancer bunny. That's okay. That's okay. We're, we're gonna, okay. So there's so much story here. I'm not gonna read all this story because it's just so much. I, I encourage you, and besides, I don't wanna spoil this for you guys. I encourage you to go in and play the PVE campaign, the story, and by the way, whatever you pick changes all of this dramatically. So I'm playing Venon right now, and the story, I, I can tell you already, I mean, I'm starting in a completely different place. And the story is probably going to be completely different. I'm just going to skip through as much of this as possible. you got to be careful when you're skipping through dialogue on this game because there is going to be some puzzle stuff where you're going to have to remember what people have said, just like you would in a normal RPG, right? So uh, I'm a warrior, not a soldier. I already went over this with Mitsu, blah, blah, blah. So these guys are like samurais and assassins and stuff. Pretty cool, absolutely. Blah. I'm just going to skip through this so that we can actually get to some actual gameplay. So this is the first battle between me and my, my uh, Shin Hair Master. So uh, all of the guys that you fight, just like yourself, will have some basic abilities. So myself as a character, as a Shin Hair Warrior, will have some basic abilities, just like Sora here has some basic abilities. So every every time he has three, three, uh, three spell points, he can target a troop and give them plus one attack. So cool, right? All right, so battle. Japanese U-Bunnies. <laughs> Um, I would love to get into the story, but we would be here all day. Like I said, there's seven years of storytelling in this game. An enormous amount of storytelling. So, as as I said, this is a digital trading card game. So that means a couple things. So, one of the things I'm going to talk about is Magic. And uh, Magic the Gathering has released, so just like in a regular... Uh, game you get the option to play if you, you you spin the coin and if you you win you get the choice to, to play either play first or uh go second and get an extra card um then you have a chance to take a mulligan if you take a mulligan you can redraw but you lose a card 
<laughs> Interesting, right? So basically, the person that goes second will get an extra card, and if you you get to play first, so that's your advantage there. So um, we're gonna keep our hand because we have three. So the shards are your mana. So if you're comparing this to magic, this would essentially kind of be your land, but it, but the 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 behavior of it is different, and you'll get to see that in a second. So we're gonna keep that hand. <laughs> so. Um, why is this different from Stonehearth, and why is this, uh, in my opinion, far better? Stonehearth is is a phaseless game. Um, it has it has two phases. What is it? Attack and that's it. That's it. Actually, I think it only has one phase. It has your attack phase. Everything else is, I mean, you, you cast an attack and do everything at once, and then you move on. Whereas this, like Magic, has is a multi-phase game. Um, so, and you can control which phases where you want the pauses to be, but the game, uh, you can cast interrupts and, and quick actions just like you could in Magic the Gathering, and you have all the control in the world to make sure that you don't forget to do that stuff, but you will, because <laughs> I do all the time. Okay, so uh, you ca uh, on your turn, of course, you can play down uh, your shards, which is your mana or your land, if you prefer to call it that, but it's not really like that. Because it's a digital card game, the resources, just like everything else, can be manipulated in a digital way. So unlike land, we don't have to keep track of it. We don't have to keep tapping it. The shard automatically goes into our resource pool. Now, we have one blood shard, which, you know, which there's, what, five different colors, just like magic. Uh, blood is your quote-unquote black. And faster? Deluxe be faster? What do you mean be faster? Well, I'm trying to explain it here. If we don't explain it, then what good is this, right? <laughs> I missed a lot. Okay, whatever, guys. All right, so, um, and then we've got Killblade. Let's just take a look. So this is, uh, we. you start with the starter deck. By the way, you get to keep all of these cards when you play PvE. These Some of these cards will be, will be, will work in PvP as well. So you're given cards. You're given cards at the beginning of the game, and some of them are PvP compatible. Some of them are strictly PvE. So this is an example of a Shin Hair. Low cost and lethal. So uh, cards can have a variety of different uh, traits attached to it. Lethal is one of them. So no matter what he hits, they're going to die. Even if the, even if this troop dies because he is a one attack, one defense, then of course uh, uh, he will die probably in any attack. But um, so will the enemy. Okay. And uh, the AI is pretty good, um, especially if you're new to, to collectible card games or to these types of games, um, you'll find it challenging. Um, but as time goes on, you'll find that uh, you're pretty you're pretty able to deal with the enemies. And it's all about deck building. This game is all about deck building. So uh, yeah, there we go. So he's also playing a Shin Hair deck, of course, and he's got the one cost troop that is one tube. And notice he doesn't have a special ability. So let's just go through that, resolve that. And we're not going to play through this entire match. I just wanted to give you an, an, a guys an idea and sort of rem let you know that this it does play a lot like Magic. So if you look at the card properties here, uh, you know when you're looking at uh, your creatures, just like in Magic, you've got an attack value, a defense value. Those heal at the end of the turns, so long as your characters survive. And then a number of things can be added as special attributes to the card. Now, what's important to remember is this: this is I'm actually going to quit out of this game now because we're going to go back to my other game. Uh, yes, I want to concede. Um, it would take too long for me to show this all off. We don't. Ha we only have. We only have 45 minutes. So, yes. Well, I'm not going to go through the entire match right now because I'm really. Imp I really want to show off the larger portions of this game. So, if we go, let's go back to my main game here. Uh, exit game. I think I actually have to. Uh, I screwed that up. Whatever. That's fine. Okay. So, because this is a strictly digital card game. Um, you can manipulate the cards in ways like you couldn't do in Magic. So although it plays like Magic, there's some really awesome things that they've included in this to make it very different from Magic, and because it's a digital card game, sort of take it to that next level. For example, there are cards that will allow you to add cards to your deck, and you can get to a point where you're, you've got cards that will tell you to add cards to the deck of the same type, so you could theoretically be adding 40 or 50 cards to a deck, whereas you couldn't do that in a regular Magic-type fight. Now the other thing that uh, is really important, let's take a look at the collection here. I'm going to show you some really important things about this game. Okay, so some cards. Oh, and by the way, this is this is this is your main card collection. Um, you can sort it between your PvP and PvE only cards. There are there all PvP cards can be used in PvE, but uh, uh, PvE cards cannot be used in PvP because PvE cards are kind of this. They're 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 kind of a little bit they're they're let loose, right? You can do a lot more with a PVE card, and there's really no control over them. Where they've tried to maintain some serious control in the PVP circuit. But let's take a look at something specific here. I want to look at socketed cards. 
Okay, so cards can have, because it's a digital card game, you can manipulate cards both temporarily and kind of semi-permanently um, in a deck uh, beyond one gameplay. For example, this card has a socket in it. Now, if, if I put this card into this deck, which doesn't belong in this deck, but that's besides the point, you can actually add uh, gems to the to the card and change, inherently change the cards. And uh, there's there's this adds such diversity to deck building, it's not even funny. Because if, you're, if you've ever played Magic Word games like this, you know, a card is a card. But in this, um, putting it into sort of, if I made this a green black deck, of course, maybe I could add a green crystal which is basically a green mana so as long as i have green mana in, or sorry black mana as long as i have black mana in my deck i can actually permanently alter this card within my deck so i thought that that is a really cool feature and something you could only do in a collect in a in a digital trading card game the other thing that's really important is equipment now equipment is something that you can actually attach to your to your champion or your avatar right so and Equipment can actually fundamentally, once again, change cards. So, exa for example, if I have Ashwood Gloves equipped on Zoram of Koro here, which is my champion, all of, uh, the, this particular set of gloves will actually permanently change any of the cards in my deck that are Ashwood Colossuses to have your Ashwood Colossus have. This, this has cost minus one in all of your zones for each elf you control. So, once again, something that you could only really do with a digital card game. Now, I don't know if I have any uh, uh, really, really digital cards like, for example, there's one card called Raptor where if you play it it adds four more Raptors to your to your deck so <laughs> um, and and then and then every time you play a new Raptor it actually adds plus one plus one to every Raptor so this is something you couldn't do in in, in say Magic the Gathering otherwise you'd have to have 5,000 cards sitting beside you ready to go at any given time I suppose you could but it would be very very costly now let's talk about why this is actually a digital trading card game and not a collecting collectible card game it all comes down to um, what you can do with those cards after you've earned them. What's this? Kill Deluxe? What? I'm just looking at chat here, chat here, guys. What? <laughs> I, I don't know what, what's going on in chat. Uh, chat is crazy. Chat's always crazy. Um, but anyway, so let's talk about the, uh, the auction house. So you can actually win packs of cards in the PvE game. You can also earn gold. There's two different types of currency in this game. Um, uh, yes, there is tokens, but <laughs> um, these this actually physically changes. You can see the changes on each card. It's something that you couldn't do in Magic. But anyway, um, and besides that, if I mean whatever, it doesn't matter. All right, so two different currencies. Um, you earn gold in the PVE game. Platinum is something that you can only purchase with cash. Now you can actually. There is a reason to have gold in this game, even if you're a person with a lot of money, because you can only open certain things um, with gold. And I'm going to get to that in a second. So the cards that you earn in the PVE game, which are random packs, they're called adventure packs, and they include PVE cards as well as cards from actual sets in the game. And you can actually come in here and sell those cards for uh, for for platinum. So you can actually earn them in the PvE game and sell them for platinum and people do buy them for platinum because people look for specific cards. Now why would you need to, why, why is gold valuable? Why would somebody come in here and sell for gold and I'll explain why because there are people that only play uh, PvP in this game and they still need the gold currency and I'll show you why. So let's go to the store here really quickly. Wow, chat is insane today. All right, so this is the store and the only things you can buy from the game developer is packs and, and starter decks. That's it. They don't sell any of the extra bonus stuff. They don't sell equipment. They don't sell They don't sell uh, any of the bells and whistles. There's also something else called Stardust. They don't sell chests. They don't sell any of the extra stuff in here. They don't even sell the gold in here. You can't come in and buy the PVE currency. So this is important to maintain this market. <laughs> All right. Okay, so, and uh, you can buy Platinum. Platinum is, of course, purchasable. We're not going to talk about that right away. We're going to talk about uh, opening packs and why it's important to have gold. So when you're opening a pack, and we're just going to show you what that's like. I have this from when I had the, the Kickstarter, so I've got a few packs here ready to go. So you, and uh, even, even even opening packs in this game is a is an awesome experience. So you can take your pack, you can drop it into Kismet. This is Kismet here. It's the... Uh, the the fate girl whatever anyway so you get uh, 15 cards and then you'll get one either rare or legendary if it's legendary it's gonna have a red hue before you actually flip that card 
So we're going to flip that card. A pack costs approximately $2, by the way. Um, transport. Okay, so anyway, I got an Ascetic Aspirant. I don't know if that's good or bad. I haven't played the game good enough, but it is just a rare. Now, it doesn't end there. When you get, uh, when you finish opening a pack, you get a chest, and it's a random chest, a random rarity chest. So there's, I, I don't know how many levels of rarity there are, but they go right up to Legendary and Primal, and we'll talk about Primal in a second. So now, um, the only way to open the, or to, to, uh, there's, there's a couple things. I can just open this chest and I can get some random rewards. I can even win more packs, um, by, by opening this chest, but I can also spend gold to spin the wheels of fate and permanently alter this chest in a variety of different ways. I can also spin and get more, more, more spins. I can spin and improve the rarity of the chest. I can spin and get and double the output of the chest. I mean, there's all sorts of things. I, I don't know if I can double the output, but there's a lot of things. PV upgrade chest, PVE cards, sleeves. You can win sleeves for your for your game, all sorts of stuff. But you can only do this with gold. And keep in mind, I've been playing the uh, PV, P, PVE area of the game for about eight hours, and I've only earned 2,325 gold. So it, it's not like it's easy to get gold. There's no other way to get gold in the game other than playing the PVE or by trading cards on the market. So that's where people can actually sell some of... Uh, uh, trade up, so to speak, from the PvE world and get into the PvP world without spending any money. All right, so next on the list is uh, the PvP. Uh, actually, before we do that, let's go back into the, uh, hold on, resume. Let's go back into the campaign briefly and I'll just show you a little bit more about the uh, further into the campaign because I think this is important. Okay, uh, I have another character called Nyctos who is a Venon mage who is a Drider mage. Actually, it's funny, they're not quite Driders. So a Drider is half human, half spider, whereas the Venon are half orc, half spider. So there's some variation there. So this is your full campaign. So uh, the reason I didn't want to continue with the, the, the starter one that we just did is because it was going to do a tutorial and I don't want to torture you guys with a tutorial. I want to show you, this is, this is like I said, this, this is a wallet, but I did, I mean, I didn't spend the whole eight hours in here. I was wandering back and forth and doing other things, but it can take some time. So as you can see, you've got different uh, locations that you can hit and as time goes on, this will open up. And this is all a hand-drawn map, by the way. They spent a whole bunch of time. It's huge. The map gets huge. I've actually seen some, some, some footage of other people with their, their online stuff and, or with their PVE stuff and this map is huge. Now, uh, when it's blue, that means it's a repeatable event, so I can go back to whatever this is and repeat whatever event is here. If it's yellow, it means it's incomplete, and uh, in some cases, yellow could mean a dungeon. And I think this is a dungeon here, this little teepee, and in some cases, they could mean a city where you have interactions, get quests, and the, of course, on the right side, you can see the, all the quests that we have here too as well. Now, the character itself. This is where it gets really good. What, you can't see? You can't see the stream. <laughs> the stream should be up, guys. Um, if this, hold on, let me just double check. Let me just double check. What do you mean this is not the full campaign? Absolutely, it is the full campaign. It is absolutely the full campaign. Um, the uh, there is no other campaign in this game. And there's a full story that goes along with every character that you play. Uh, check your facts here, Paturin. All right. Let me just double check. Okay, good. The stream's okay. So, um, yeah. So, uh, as I said, you can go in here and there's a variety of different quests that you can follow through, for example. And it may not take, it may take you more than one try to actually uh, go into, uh, into an area and get the things you want. For example, I've got a quest right now to tame a chicka twice and ch tame a bubble bee and tame a dire toad. Now, and, and that, and win the match as well. So, I may have to go into an area multiple times and fight. So, as I fight, of course, I gain experience and gain levels, which leads to, of course, the talent tree, which is amazing. And I'm going to go go in the, into uh, one of the little matches here to kind of show you a little bit more about that. But um, as you gain experience, you get uh, un you get talent points, which you can spend on this wonderful tree, which is super awesome. Everything and and some of this can dramatically change how battles work for you, and it can change the cards that you're the cards how the the card behaviors in a game either permanently or by activation using spell points within a game and of course you have your basic race traits too down here which can be accented by all this stuff later on okay so let's actually go into a dungeon this is a dungeon over here 
And uh, dungeons uh, have different rules. And of course, while you're actually in this campaign map, you can adjust, you can change your cards, you can do all those things. Now, you can't actually use uh, certain cards. Certain cards will not be allowed in PvE, but for the most part, just about everything's available to you. What is limited specifically, so that you didn't come into a new PvE game with all of your fantastic PvP cards, which are amazing. What they've done is, as you move up in levels, you'll have access to more and more certain cards. For example, I can only have one legendary card in my deck. Uh, any, uh, any, any, only one of any one legendary card in my decks right now. And I can only have one of any kind of rare. So in other words, I can't have, you know, a, a good uh, tournament deck often has four of, of a rare or four of, or four of a legendary and multiples of those, those uh, legendaries, whatever, right? Or different types of legendaries and four of each, right? So that's where, that's where they kind of control the speed at which you move through the campaign, which is awesome. Um, but let's go back here. All right, so. Let's go into this dungeon. This is, uh, hold on. There we go. Okay, so ever, after traveling west for several days across, gra across flat grasslands, with only the occasional screech of a carrion bird above disrupting the silence of your journey, you see a wide streak of blue cutting across the landscape, the Indigo River. You reach down and pull something half buried from your loose dirt, a chisel, ha chisel tip hammer. It looks like something that could be used for splitting up rocks. Could this belong to Professor Void? Whatever. Uh, as you continue west, you find several more tools scattered on the ground as that a geologist might use a compass, a hand hand lens, several hammers, and a weathered sa leather satchel. I should take this stuff back to Funry. Don't worry about who that is. The tools lead towards a single teepee sitting near the bank river. As you approach the lone tent, you hear no noise coming from inside. Open the flap of the tent. Inside is a thin coyote, which is, a, yeah, an animal, a fur around his muzzle, whatever. I'm just going to skip through this because I want to get, okay, there we go. So anyway, so this is a dream state. You're in a dream state in this dungeon. You open your eyes. You're floating in a blue starry void. You recognize nothing about your surroundings. I don't, I don't. Uh, your stomach lurches as infinity stretches away from you in all possible directions. Your limb helplessly dangle in the incomprehensible nothingness. I remember, remember how I got here. A few stars above begin to dance in a slow rhythm. They move together and form a vague shape of female coyote. The two supernovas novas that form the constellation's eyes turn their galaxy devouring gaze directly at you. It's pretty like the dialogue is it's pretty good. This is this is the, the team has done such a good job in the story. Um, this is this is not a place. This is all places, traveler. You arrive the same way you always do. You have I have seen you walk among these stars many times, though you have never seen me. The only time I've floated about the clouds is in dreams, whatever. Uh, who are you? Let's just keep this moving along. I'm Sister Midnight. For some, I'm the other of the... The reason, the reason I'm trying I'm trying to actually get to a point where I have to remember... Do you, do, there's some puzzle stuff in this, and I'm trying to get to that. So, basically, this is a dream state, and it's telling us that we can go to any different area of dream that's related to a shard. So you've got the white, the red, the, the black, the green, and the blue. So uh, let's go to the black, and we'll just show you here. And the reason... The first time I went through this, I actually didn't pay attention, and I'm probably not going to pay attention this time just because I'm streaming. <laughs> All right, um, <laughs> chat. Uh, the beetle was skittering down the trunk of a very tall tree when he ran. Oh, uh, yeah, something about uh, dungeons. Actually, we'll come back to that. Uh, because dungeons, you only have three lives. That's another thing. When you're in a dungeon, you only have three lives. So if you lose three battles in a dungeon, you have to start it over. And there's penalties for that, but we'll get to that. So pardon me, Miss Spider. The beetle called out. I happen to notice that you... This, pay attention, guys, because there's going to be a skill testing question after this. This is a dream. Pardon me, Spider. The beetle called out. I happen to notice that you stretched your web between this tree and the one over there. I Might I walk across your web to get to the other tree? My family, you see, lives in the other tree, Beetle said, and I picked these berries for them. If I were to climb all the way down to the bottom of the tree, walk across the forest floor, then climb all the way up the other tree, why? The berries could the berries could spoil. I would reach my destination much quicker, quicker if I could just cross your web here. Well, aren't you a bold one, Spider hissed. Aren't you afraid I'm going to eat you? I suppose you could, Beetle said, but you see, I'm quite desperate to reach my family and would ask you with all politeness to refrain from doing so. After thinking a moment, Spider said, it is your lucky day, Beetle. I'm quite full from dinner. I have no interest in eating you. You may cross my web. My thanks, Beetle said, and crossed the spider's web to the opposite tree safely. The next morning, the Beetle appeared and called out, pardon me, Miss Spider. Sorry to trouble you again on this lovely morning, but I need to return the tree with the berries. Might I cross your web again? Spider sighed and said, very well, you may cross. 
For the next week, Beetle would cross cr Spider's web twice each day, once in the morning to get, the, to get to the tree with the berries, and once in the evening to return to the tree where the family had lived. After a few days, Beetle stopped asking for Spider's permission and merely crossed the web without a, barely a nod in the spider's direction. One morning, as Beetle crossed, the web, Beetle crossed the web, which had become routine, Spider pounced. Her fangs pierced the Beetle's carapace, killing him instantly. The spider then wrapped up her prey in a sticky cocoon to eat her later. What does this story mean? And so the, the first time I went through this, you know, like we all do you know we kind of get i just want to get to the battle you know i just want to do the thing i just skipped through the whole thing so i have not answered this question correctly so i'm hoping to get the help of the community here so the what does this story mean the beetle was lazy and abused the spider's friendship he deserved to be eaten uh the story is the spider betrayed a friend's trust to satisfy her own hunger uh, i don't know about that one life and death are arbitrary don't look for meaning where there is none to be found i would think it's the first one what are you guys saying so this is the interesting thing and while you guys think about uh <laughs> Spider has issues with being passive aggressive. Okay. <laughs> um, so this is the thing with this, uh, the campaign. There is even puzzles. It's just, it's not in the same way that you would expect other, uh, the spider ex explode, exploderized. Number three. Okay. People are saying three. Okay. Life and death are arbitrary. Don't look for meaning where there is none to be found. Uh, you hear the spider before you... Uh, see it skitter from the mist, its fangs raised and dripping with purple colored poison. That is not the right answer, guys. <laughs> so because we didn't answer correctly, um, it, I think it's probably the first one, but I don't know. Um, Gift of Blood. So this spider has a uh, natural ability. Yeah. So I'm not going to go through this whole battle. Actually, maybe I will. Maybe we'll do this one. Yeah, it was one. Lightning JC, I, I'm pretty sure it was one, but other people had picked three. So Lightning JC, don't spam. You're a moderator. Not allowed to spam. <laughs> okay, so, uh, yes, this is, this is my spider deck. I actually really like this deck. I'm going to play through this. I, we're actually going to play one match because I think it deserves it. <laughs> All right, and uh, we started off with lots of blood and, a, oh, giant corpse flies there, really good, blood creeper, and atro atrophy, ah, I don't have any good starting cards, so I don't have any one mana cards or two mana cards, which is a little concerning. I'm going to draw again. Uh, this is better. Yes, I will keep hand because I've got a, a one, two, three, and four. This is carry me as long as I get more blood. So keep hand. So let's talk about the uh, character and what we can do. So right now I don't have a lot of abilities. I'm only level three. Um, I have uh, so every time I uh, he didn't do anything. He played a he played a he played a resource. Okay, end turn. Okay, so I'm going to play a resource now. Every time I play a resource, you'll notice that my Play a resource and you'll notice that my character's pool of magic builds up and then i can use this magic to randomly gain three to five spell points to use because i am a mage right so i can cast this uh, on my turn and it gives me so in that case i only got three spell pound spell points and i can use those spell points with spells that i have and i only have two spells right now i have one that costs four i can draw a card then choose to discard a different card i can do this at any time by the way anytime it's, it's considered an interrupt and then I've got another one called Weakness, where I can give a target troop minus one attack, which is awesome. I use it all the time. It's a great little skill. Okay, so I can also play... Uh, oh, yeah. I, apparently I have uh, I have some bunnies in this deck too. I don't know if I intended to do that. I think I was just... It's it's a placeholder because this is this is a spider deck. Oh, so he cast... He did a quick action called Taint, which gives a uh, guy minus one, minus, uh, minus one. So that I will actually kill the Shin Hair. I don't know. It seems like kind of a waste. I, I would normally do that... Um, during an attack to kind of waste a person's uh, momentum. That's what I would do anyway. So let's just skip through this. Uh, there is keyboard commands. I can be hitting the space button. And like I said before, you can decide where you want your pauses in the game. Five minutes remaining. Okay, so we're, we're, we're going to work through this, guys. We're, five minutes, I can play this one battle. So, okay. So I'm going to put down another blood shard that gives us two in our resource pool. You'll notice here on the cards, too, is... Oh, I can't play Zillith. Okay, so I, I have a solid blood deck. In other words, I only have one type of mana. I only have black mana. And Zillith is going to require at least one one blue, one black. And I need a four four total mana to cast him. So I would never be able to cast Zillith. Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, I don't know why he's in my deck. I'm going to have to fix that. Okay, but I can play a giant mosquito. As you can see, giant mosquito only requires... I only have to have one black man available and two total to cast him but he also has some special abilities he has life drain and flights but which is great because um as he's flying and stabbing people of course i'm taking life from my enemy and putting it in my own pool so next turn there we go let's do this let's do this <laughs> yes congo welcome card games yes okay so he's up to three mana and he's oh, why is he's 
see, I would never use taint. I would never use a card like this at that time. I would wait until you know I got all my momentum up and I attacked and I wasted a bunch of resources to go through the attack. He's a t he's doing that at the wrong time, I guess, in my opinion. All right, so my turn. But on the other side of it, I mean, he's been effective at making sure that I don't do any damage to him at all. <laughs> Giant Corpse Fly is another one. It is also a flying creature, but it's three mana. The reason it's a little bit more is because whenever this enter enters play, he, um, I get to uh, he gets to discard a card, which is great for me. So let's put that down. He can't, and he could still use that stupid. Uh, so I get to choose which champion because eventually, like I said, this this will end up in uh, there'll be raids where you fight multiple champions, so you actually have to choose which champion you're gonna hit with that kind of thing, which is awesome. I can't wait for that. There's gonna be two v twos. There's going to be uh, raids where you're you know you get a number of people together with their own decks, all fighting one big boss with amazing cards. I can't wait for that. Well, if we take longer than five minutes, whatever, it doesn't matter. We're gonna get this. We're gonna do this battle because. Um, I love this game. It's so much fun. I, I really like collectible card games, though. So let's put down another mana. He must be having trouble. He must not... Maybe he has all mana in his hand. I don't know. So we're going to do a Gemstone Feeder, which uh, has Life Drain himself. Plus, I can give other creatures Life Drain. And, uh, yeah, we're actually going to do a, our first attack here. He hasn't actually put down anything except for... Maybe, maybe his deck is... Maybe his deck is about limiting... Uh, what I can do, you know, by casting taints. Removal. He has a lot of removal in his deck, and then eventually he'll hit me with something that's uh, different. I don't know. So there we go. We hit him once. We could have actually used our life drain ability on our on our creature here and actually gained two points. I should have, but, you know, whatever. So there's our first... His first creature is a 4-1 zombie vulture. Ah, uh, that's kind of an issue. Um, oh, and he also cast... Uh, this is his special ability. So for five mana... He can draw a card, then give opposing champions a random blood card. So uh, he's going to give me a card, but he's going to get to draw a card. So that's not really a great one. <laughs> Good for me in a way, because I'm going to get a random blood card. There we go. If I wasn't playing blood, that would be a problem. So I've never seen this card before. It's a flying one that deals combat damage to an opposing champion. That champion chooses and discards a card. <gasps> oh, this is good. Um, I think this... This might be a fairly rare card. When the, when this dies, repeat, bury the top four cards of each opposing champion's deck for each wing terror in your crypt. Cool. Neat. Neat little card. Okay, so end turn. So now he has a flying creature out, so I do have to be a little bit cautious. Let's see what we can do here. So uh, I'm going to probably just attack with everything. Um, if he kills one guy, it doesn't really matter. I mean, he's, I, we, we'll still have the card advantage, so we're going to do that. We're going to attack with everything. Um, this time we're going to make use of the special... Oh, actually, yeah, I'm, it might be too late. I don't know if I can still do it. So let's see if he blocks. Uh, doesn't look like he's going to block. He's just going to let it all go through because he wants to do that four damage to me. So I think I have to use that lifesteal command before I actually do the attack. Anyway, good to know that. So he's down to six already. He's going to be in big trouble. Now I'm going to cast whatever spells I have available. We're going to do uh, with that wing tear, sure. Yeah, and we're going to do a giant mosquito. So we do have some defenses to, still to go. That's why you always play your cards, generally speaking, even in Magic. You always play your, your, new, your new creatures after your attack. So he didn't defend because he thought that he's going to be able to get a free shot in us later. But nope. <laughs> no matter what, he's, he's, he's going to have trouble unless he does something to prevent, uh, prevent me from blocking. So he's done another zombie vulture. Okay. See, he should be doing his attack first. Oh, maybe he's not even going to attack. There we go. So done. All right. He get, yeah, but do, I don't think I get to keep that legendary. I wasn't sure if that was a legendary, because legendary is supposed to be red, and it looked a little orange. That's all. I, I, I haven't had a legendary before. So the legendary is supposed to be red. That looks a little orange to me. Maybe it's orange because I think the one indicates this is a PvE-only card. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So anyway, uh, now we, we, have, uh, we can do our attack, but what we could do here is as an additional cost to play the sacrifice, we can, so we can actually sacrifice a creature and play this card with the mana cost and give one of our creatures plus three, plus three. I don't know if that's necessarily, and that's not a quick action. That would actually be a permanent. And I don't know if we're going to do that because he's just, unless we do it to this one, actually we could do it to that one. That's actually a really good idea. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cast uh, Abominate before our attack. Oh, another thing we could do, hold on, is we can get some more spell points here. Do that. There we go. So now it was seven spell points. That means we could... And every time we cast this this spell here, this weakness, um, it raises the cost of it. So the first time will be two costs. Second time will be three costs, etc. So we can cast it at least two times right now. So we're going to do Abominate, and we're going to get rid of... We're going to get rid of... 
Probably, I don't know if this is a good idea or not, but we're going to do it anyway. We're going to get rid of the giant mosquito. We're going to sacrifice the giant mosquito, and we're going to give this guy plus three, plus three, which makes him a five, five. So the only way they can stop him from coming over now is if they both block him at the same time. And there's no way I can stop them from killing him if they do that, but I will kill both of their creatures. So now we're going to attack. Oh, I should have used that special ability again. I keep forgetting. All right, so there we go. And attack, attack, attack. So a spell point is something that our character can actually use to cast individual spells. So now he is, all right, so he's just blocking, just trying to prevent as much damage as possible. But um, he's not killing my big creatures, so that was maybe a mistake on his part. I would have used his two guys, but he's, he's, he's so low on hit points now, he's, he's going to be dead in a round. So. As you can see, it plays a lot like magic with the different phases and, of course, instants and all that kind of good stuff. Um, this deck, I've tried to make this deck uh, around building these spiderlings, which actually are cards that get put into his deck. And every time he pulls one of those spiderlings, I get a spiderling, a 1-1 creature that is unblockable. But I, we haven't really had a chance to see that. So uh, we're going to do our attack. Attack. So he can block one of those guys, but, you know, he's pretty much hooped at this point. Um, yeah, if he had, he should, I don't know. I mean, he had to block him. If he'd have blocked him, I could have reduced the amount of damage he was doing to prevent him from killing. Oh, he couldn't have blocked him because he was flying. So it doesn't matter. One more turn, we're done. Um, we could play this deployment orders. I mean, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at this point, right? Spell points could equal explosions. Yes, Conga. So eventually you can get all sorts of crazy spells to destroy creatures. So as you can see... He pulled a spiderling from his deck, and it gave me... He pulled a spiderling egg, so let's just take a look at that. So, uh, when this enters your hand or crypt, put the top card of your deck into that zone, void this, and the opposing cha champion creates spiderlings, uh, creates a spiderling and puts it into play, and the spiderling goes under my control. Whoever gives the spiderling egg to the opponent uh, gets the spiderling. So it's kind of a neat little thing, and he's, he's using a removal card, kill, to destroy a non-artifact troop. He can go ahead and do that. It's probably too late yeah he's he's pretty he's toast so we'll just finish this now we've got an unblockable creature uh can we actually finish it now uh no we can't quite do that i guess we should have uh should have done our other thing first but that's okay let's just put this down doesn't matter deployment uh is is an artifact so you, you don't need any color specific uh mana to be able to cast this and depending it, it reduces the cost of this card to even below one i don't think you get mana back though if you have for every troop you control it makes this card cost less and i can sacrifice this card plus two mana to draw two cards so it's just something to help speed up the deck as well so let's just i guess two more turns no matter what here he can't block the spiderling so there's really nothing he can do there. Done. And one more, one more round. And we're all done. There we go. He's, I'm going to let him go ahead and attack. I, actually, what we can do, we can, we can use our weakness and make it so he, yeah, sure, go ahead and attack. But um, we've reduced his attack by one, which means he can't, he doesn't actually do any damage. So he's completely useless. There we go. And... Giant spider spawn he's casting, which is a 4-2 creature, but it doesn't matter because we've got a creature that's unblockable. He would have had to have removed the spiderling in order to move on, so we're just going to finish the game, of course. Uh, just attack. Uh, he's not even flying, so I can attack with bull. Whatever. Done. Now, it, he could have surprised me there and come up with something that would, you know, cancel the attack or make it so that our guys do no damage this round or something. But And then, of course, come back with the counterattack. But there you go. There is sort of a quick game. A quick game of uh, Shards of Fate. And uh, I, as you saw there, I got gold and I got experience. Sometimes you win packs. Uh, the spider's legs crumble into a quivering, lifeless sphere before it dissolves into the abyss. I'm feeling a bit like that in the Beatles story. So here we go. Now, because I'm in a dungeon, if I quit out of the game right now, I'm going to have to redo. So you have to actually go into a dungeon and finish it in one session. I don't know if all dungeons are the same, but uh, you notice here you get three lives. So every time you die in a dungeon, you reduce life and then it kicks you out. And when you come back, you, there is a penalty. So anyway, there is a quick game and let's talk quickly about PvP and then we're done. Quickly about PvP. Will's going to have a connection here. <laughs> <laughs> Will wants to go and do other things. So, because we're after the after the stream, we're going to be playing. Um, we're gonna play. Yeah. So if we leave, it's gonna cancel our progress. That's fine. Um, after the stream, we're gonna be playing. Or after this show, we're gonna be playing. Uh, uh, what are we playing? Supreme Commander, Forged Alliance, and we're gonna try and get as many people in there as possible and have a really awesome match. It's gonna be super fun. All right. So, let's go back into. 
Let's go back in here and we'll take a quick look at PvP because it's, it's important that I bring this up because it is very relevant. They've spent a lot of time making sure that this is 100% balanced. Um, PvP, uh, the circuit is incredible. So at any given time, there is a full circuit of tournaments going on. And then on the weekends, they do VIP tournaments and of course, uh, expanded tournaments for uh, the more expert players, etc. Leading right up to, and I think you have to win... Uh, a certain amount before you're accepted into the actual, you know, like the $100,000 league tournaments and stuff like that, just like any of, any one of these. But what I love about this, it's it got a full draft queue as well. So if you're not familiar with draft, draft is when you, uh, you take three packs and here, we'll even read the rules on it because it's right here. So for this tournament, each player will receive three booster packs and be randomly placed at one table, quote unquote, with seven other players. Each player opens a booster pack and drafts a card from it. And then it rotates around the table until all the cards are gone. And then you have to make a deck out of that and then fight up to eight players in, 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 in a draft queue. And it's the best way to play this game. If you're going to do PvP, I highly recommend it. Now, you can buy the packs beforehand. You can win them in the PvE um, by 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 buying packs via the the it doesn't matter where you get the packs the point is um, it costs you three packs now if I wanted to join this queue I don't have any packs available to play this particular tournament because they have to be a certain type of packs as I said every pack is about a dollar or two dollars so every hundred platinum is about a dollar American and then it's a hundred to enter the tournament so uh, but the nice thing about this you've got you've got a really high probability of actually winning more packs so if you're going to get into the PvP circuit this is what you need to do you draft queue all day long you're gonna get more and more cards it's going to cost you a little bit of money. Maybe. If you're good at the game, it's not going to cost you any more money. I mean, 100 platinum, so you, 20 bucks worth of platinum could last you forever, theoretically, if you're really good at the game. I highly recommend if you're going to get into the PvP on any card game right now, this is where it is. Honestly, this game is so good. The PvP is so well hashed out. It's amazing. Guys, is there any questions before I get going here? Um, let's just show off a little bit more. Oh, uh, before I go, I should show off their actual cash store because uh, it's, it's relevant. Um, PvP is, is, is as some people, some people like to call PvP pay to win in, in these, but uh, <clears throat> I mean, it's still about deck building, right? It's still about deck building. Um, but you certainly, I think to be part of the PvP, you're, you're, I mean, there is ways to get around it, but if you're serious about it, you're gonna have to spend some money. The best way to spend money in this game, uh, this is all Canadian dollars, by the way, if you're looking at American, it's gonna be $100 for platinum, for 10,000 platinum, uh, 50 bucks, I think, yeah, 50 bucks for 5,000 platinum. This is the way to buy uh, your stuff. I think there is a package in Steam right now, but it's not efficient. Um, if you're gonna, if you're interested in PvP, just buy your platinum straight up. Um, <clears throat> And uh, any other questions? I think that's probably it. I don't see any questions here, guys. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this sort of a sneak peek at Hex. I highly recommend it. Get into the PV PVE. Give it a shot. It's not going to cost you anything. It's absolutely free. And if you like it, I, I, it's worth getting into more of this. But you can't, like I said, you can, you can buy these packs even in the auction house. So people win packs in games and then sell them. Hold on, close. Let's go to the auction house really quickly here. People win packs in games and then sell them. Um, on the auction house for 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 both well I think for primarily uh, uh, platinum but people are selling stuff and buying stuff for gold too as well so you just uh, you just have to go in here and do a full search for whatever so if, in other words if you're looking for packs um, then you do a uh, a full search on packs and it'll show you whatever's available. For example, you can buy set one booster packs for 150 platinum, which is cheaper than buying them from the store. The the one thing that's different, um, <laughs> the one thing, people are saying I love pay, Purple Electric Tiger says I love pay to win. I don't love pay to win. Um, it's a collectible card game. Every collectible card game in history has been pay to win. So if that's your argument, then you don't like collectible card games. Collectible card games, you buy, you buy things. It's just how it is. But there is a full PVE circuit in this, which allows you to do more than just PVE. So, um, yeah. So you can buy, uh, buy stuff on the the auction house too as well. You can buy packs on the auction house. They're the exact same thing. The difference is when you buy them on the auction house, there's a two percent chance. There is a two percent chance that you will earn. A primal pack, which is, uh, and it's only 2%, but if you buy them directly from here, 2% chance that you'll get a primal pack, which is 15 cards, 13 rares, and 2 legendaries, uh, which is extremely valuable. They go for a lot of money on the auction house, so there is still that. Anyway, guys, my question is, can you tell Audi that he cannot beat multiple ALX? Okay, whatever. Anyway, guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed this sneak peek at Hex. Give it a shot. It's worth it. It's free. Um, and I think you'll enjoy yourself, especially if you're a magic player. I think you'll really enjoy this. If you're a Hearthstone player, you'll find this way too complex. That's that's my opinion. <laughs> Hearthstone is the casual of the, the, the collectible card game 
uh, genre, in my opinion. Um, but maybe, maybe you know, there's lots of people that probably went, that went from Magic to Hearthstone too as well. So you might enjoy this. It is a lot more complicated, a little bit harder to get into, but it's worth it. And once you get past that barrier of learning it, you'll really, really enjoy it, guys. Guys, I'm going to wrap this up. And I hope you enjoyed this sneak peek of Hex. We'll see you in uh, we'll see you in a few minutes. We're gonna start and we're gonna play some Supreme Commander on Twitch. Okay, be right back.